Namaskar Algo. Today we are going to go through shloka number five, the stotra number five shloka, and understand the meaning of what Apanacharya recited and why he did so. And many of us can relate to this in our very own lives that we are living by the grace of Guru Raghavendra. The fifth stanza goes this way Bhavya Swarupo. Bhavadukka Tula Sangragri Chairya Sukha Dhairya Shali Samastha Dushtagraha Nigrahesho Duratya Yoplava Sindhu Setuhu. This is the composition of the words that are fantastic if you just take a step back and apply Sanskrit and see what Apanna described Rairu as. Bhavya Swarupa, Bhavya Swarupo is Bhavya Swarupa. Rairu's auspicious form is what Bhavya Swarupo is. Think of Rairu sitting in front of you. Close your eyes for a minute and think Rairu is sitting in front of you, not inside the Brindavana, outside the Brindavana. He is sitting there, he is smiling and he is blessing. Kalpavriksha Kamadenu, he is blessing us. Close your eyes and think for a minute how auspicious that form is. How wonderful. I mean, when you step inside any Raira Sanidhi, your mind gets clear of all negative thoughts. I don't know if you, any of you have ever observed it. The next time you go to Mantralaya or to any Raira Sanidhi, when you step inside, your mind focuses only on Rairu. You are not thinking about, okay, what am I going to get for lunch? Or what did I eat for breakfast? Or man, that guy standing opposite to me is wearing a Rolex. Your mind is not going to go on these worldly thoughts. So auspicious is the form of Rairu. Bhavya Swarupo. Bhava Dukkha. Bhava Dukkha. What is Dukkha? Dukkha is sorrows. You know why sorrows always hinder not just human beings. Sorrows hinder animals. Sorrows hinder plants. Sorrows hinder every living being on this earth. However small, however big you are, if you are a living being, sorrows hinder you. Bhava Dukkha. All the sorrows in this samsara that we live in. Bhava Dukkha Thula. Thula is what? Thula is basically... Think of it. What do you do with Tula? You weigh, right? When you go to the store in the US, you basically have a digital scale where you put something and it tells you the weight and you keep walking. But if you go to India for a minute and you're in the market, the guy is going to take a scales out. He's going to put a weight and he's going to say, I'm giving you kal kg. I'm giving you half kg. I'm giving you a kg. So when that Tula, Tula, when you are weighing something in front of Rairu, his form is so auspicious that everything stands in balance. Bhava Dukkha Tula, all sorrows balance themselves out. That is the beauty of this Guru. Sangha. Sangha. What is Sangha? Sangha is a mass, a collection, a mass. But in the real world we live in, when you say Sangha, you are talking about a huge mass of cotton. Sangha Agni, Sangha Agni, Agni Charayaha, Charayaha. What is Agni? Agni is Agni, Agni is fire, Charayaha, burning. Sangha Agni Charayaha, like fire burning a large mass of cotton, he is going to, with his auspicious form, burn away the sorrows that are hitting us at this minute, today. The sorrows that have been hindering us for the last few years. And he will bless us to also be under his auspicious guidance for the sorrows of the future. Sorrows are not occurring only one time. Sorrows are there in a continuum throughout our lives. Sri Raghavendra Swami's auspicious form burns away the sorrows. 
that is why when they ask you to carry a small photo of raghavendra swami in your wallet it's not to showcase to the world that hey you know what i am such a divine guru bhakta that i am always carrying him around with me no it is worshiping the guru saying oh guru your form is so auspicious that wherever you are no sorrows will occur please be with me always and bless me you are surrendering at his feet it is all about that servitude that servitude needs to come in us when that servitude comes in us sukha dhairya shali he is the one who is going to be there with you to give you the courage and the happiness that you want that way you are able to cross every little ocean of sorrow without it becoming a burden on you the next two lines are even more wonderful samasta samasta is all dushta graha graha is not just meaning planets when you say i went to the temple did you worship the navagrahas did you do this for shanishwara did you do this for rahu did you do this for ketu people are going to just point at something that they are used to or that they have heard people saying no these grahas are all bound by time every living being in this earth is having to go through those nine grahas in a cycle throughout their lives samasta dushta graha what is dushta graha when bad times come upon us in a specific graha they will say oh rahu dasa nadita ide you go to uh, kalahasti you are having ketu dosha go and do something else here oh you are having sanishwara dosha for the seven and a half years you have to go to trinallaru or you have to go to some other place they'll give you some places where you can go and worship these grahas no don't worry about going to some other place and worshiping those grahas go to the guru samasta dushta graha nigraha isho nigraha isho the lord in controlling what happens when the lord orders something to not hurt you when the lord orders something to not hurt you you are not hurt to the maximum extent you are hurt to a minimal extent whatever you can bear easily but in order for the lord to hear that you need the grace of this guru that is why samasta dushta graha nigraha isho the lord in controlling o raghavendra you are competent enough to control these grahas if not please guide me to the lord and let the lord bless me so that i will be able to bear the pains duratyaya uppaplava sindu setuhu durat tiaya uplaplava means the ocean of difficulties and adversities we encounter think of this for a minute you go and read the autobiography of uh, thomas alva edison he says i worked on the light bulb 99 times and i failed the 100th time i got it read benjamin franklin i got electrified by trying to fly a kite in a storm and i learned that yes these wires can pass signals and that is how i found out how to make transmission work go and read einstein hey 99 times out of 100 i fail the 100th time i succeed because i have learned from all my failures all these adversities that we encounter they are an ocean of difficulties and adversities that we cannot see but with the grace of the guru you will have a bridge that you will cross it over with sindu setuhu setu is a bridge that is why lord rama is also called setu raja setu raja the king of bridges he built a bridge that we today call adams bridge between india and sri lanka that was built in the time of rama and it has been proven beyond anybody's doubt so what we are looking at is by the grace of this guru so in the fifth stanza apanna says by the grace of this guru and his auspicious form if you servitude to his feet he will drive away all your sorrows he will bless you in times of your adversity and he will give you a bridge with a hand that you will be able to cross over those adversities and those times very easily hence 
once again reciting rai rashtotra every day understanding the meaning gives us a lot more from the guru because now we are actually accepting that mastery of his and we are serving at his feet